Thank you very much for your invitation to talk about the role of molecular testing in digestive cancer treatment. Uh, I am Estelle Cochin and I am gastroenterologist specialized in uh, digestive oncology and oncogenetics. It's a great pleasure for me uh, to participate to this meeting. Next slide. I have uh, no disclosure. Next, uh, next slide. Molecular testing is a part of personalized medicine and there's no common definition of personalized medicine, but it could be defined as according to uh, the European Medicine Agency, like give the right patients the right treatment with each medications given the right dose at the right time. In short, it's an ideal medicine because it's tailor-made. Next slide. Personalized medicine is described as a multi-approach um, in patient care, in prevention by behavior, physical activity, in detection of the disease at early stage, to evaluate the risk of tumor like genetic predisposition, in accurate diagnosis, in treatment, and in the management of treatment response and disease progression. Next slide. Since 2012, opinion leaders have started to abandon progressively personalized medicine in favor of precision medicine. The precision medicine or tailor-made medicine was made possible by emerging technologies in which genetics and genomics occupy a preponderant place. This is a medicine which is adapted to individual patient, taking into account biomarkers and genetic characteristics of the tumor and of the patient. Next slide. As you know, an important progress in metastatic digestive cancer treatment has been made during the last decades. Before the 60s, we have only the use of the best supportive care. And uh, in the 80s, the chemotherapy by 5-fluoroacyl arrived. In the 2000, uh, the B and 3 chemotherapy, and then more recently, the apparitions of the precision medicine with the targeted therapy and immunotherapy, thanks to the use of biomarkers and the advent of next generation sequencing and the circulating CTD, the CTD DNA. These recent advances improve the effectiveness of traditional treatments by chemotherapy. Next slide. In the prescription of certain precision medicine treatments like targeted therapy or immunotherapy or condition by uh, the presence of specific molecular abnormalities in tumor cells. The goal of this treatment is the, to reduce the risk of disease progression and death. Currently, in advanced digestive cancer treatment, we ask for molecular testing. Molecular testing aims to identify biomarkers, which are biological markers. And these biological markers can influence therapeutic care. They can be blood markers, or tissue marker. Next slide. As you know, a tumor is composed of cells with multiple genetic abnormalities and can accumulate and evolve over the time. These genetic abnormalities are present in the tumor cell. These tumor mutations are not present in all cells of the body, as in case of genetic predisposition which called our germline mutations. Next slide. Biomarkers are molecular abnormalities that may occur in the form of mutations or dilation or insertion or amplification or translocation. 
A mutation is the modification of the sequence of a gene. It's like a mistake in a world. The amplification is an abnormal increase in the number of copies in the gene, in the cell. Some of the genetic abnormalities can become biomarkers detected by molecular tests. And molecular tests aim to detect possible biomarkers in a patient's tumor. Next slide. Currently, the prescription of targeted therapies is often guided by the molecular characteristics of patient tumor. Biomarkers may be associated with this treatment, and this may even be a condition of prescription. These targeted therapies can block the receptor on the surface of the tumor cell, the transfer of information, or the messengers. Next slide. The precision medicine includes, includes also immunotherapy. This treatment has been developed to restore an appropriate human response. Indeed, the cancer cells are able to hijack the human system's control devices to avoid being attacked and destroyed. For this, the tumor triggers very precise mechanisms which can inactivate the human cells. We say that tumor break the human system. The key elements of these mechanisms are called checkpoints, like PD-1 or PD-L1, and can be blocked by treatments, the human checkpoints inhibitors. The blocking of these breaks then reactivate the human system and allows it to fight against tumor cells. For example, the anti-PD-1 or anti-PD-L1. Next slide. What are the main biomarkers in digestive tumors? For colorectal cancer, we have the main biomarkers like RAS, BRAF, MSI for microsatellite instability. For esophagastric cancer, R2. For cholangiocarcinoma, FGFR, EDH1 or 2. For pancreatic cancer, BRAC1 or BRAC2. For gastrointestinal tumor, uh, tumor, the GIST, KIT, and PDGFOA. Next slide. For the sake of time, we have, we have uh, decided to focus my co talk on colorectal cancer. And while the previous talk was focused on early colorectal cancer, I'm going to talk about advanced metastatic colorectal cancer. Correctal cancers shows a great heterogeneity and the better characterization of correctal cancers has made it possible to define four different groups, the consensus molecular subtypes with different profile. We will not go into the detail, but it, this is just to underline the diversity of these tumors and the complexity of the treatments. Next slide. Biomarkers are tested in all new metastatic uh, patients and those who have progressed after the treatment. For the metastatic colorectal cancer, the main biomarkers are CARAS, NRAS, BRAF gene analysis, and the analysis of the mismatch repair proteins and or microsatellite instability, MSI. This analysis can detect somatic spontaneous mutations to identify patients for targeted treatment. This analysis requires biopsy tissue. Next slide. How these analyses are done? The prescription is made by the clinician. The prescription is made by the clinician who uh, ask the transport of the tumor fragment uh, by the pathologist to the tumor genetic platform. The results are returned to clinician to allow him to adapt the treatment. 
And this analysis are currently performed in eight or 10 days. Next slide. Two points are uh, important to emphasize. The development of molecular analysis from blood circulating to more cells or circulating to more DNA. And the development of next generation sequencing that allow multiple genes analysis in a single time on one sample. Next slide. In clinical practice, we must ask for RAS status. Mutations in CARAS and NRAS genes represent about 50% of tumors. The anti GFR therapy by panitumumab or cetuximab is only allowed in patients with non mutated cancer, their RAS wild type. Even in the absence of mutations, the response of treatment. The response to treatment is observed in 30 to uh, 40 percent of patients. The rough mutations are found in approximately in 10 percent of metastatic colorectal cancer, and the most frequent is the V600E. The, they are associated with a bad prognosis and resistance to anti GFR agents. And we propose intensified chemotherapy without anti GFR alone in first line. A combination of anti GFR or anti BRAF agents could be proposed after one or two prior treatments according to the recent results of Beacon trial. Next slide. The third current biomarkers is the microsatellite inst instability status. Microsatellite instability represents about 5 to 15 percent of sporadic colorectal cancer and is almost constant in Lynch syndrome. Lynch syndrome is a genetic predisposition to colorectal cancer related to an hereditary genetic abnormality of one of a DNA repair gene, the so mismatch repair gene. Microsatellite instability is a reflection of poor cellular repair, which results in the presence of numerous tumor mutations. And these tumor characteristics allow patients to benefit from immunotherapy. Next slide. Indeed, patients with metastatic colorectal cancer with microsatellite instability uh, in black have a better response to immunotherapy in terms of overall survival than patients with microsatellite stability status. MSS in red. Next slide. In the near future, we could imagine having a more complete analysis of different biomarkers with a targeted therapy or immunotherapy corresponding to the molecular profile. For the metastatic colorectal cancer with microsatellite instability, we propose the use of immunotherapy. For the other tumors, the research of RAS, BRAF, R2, RET, ALK, and TRAC, ROS1, etc., and the appropriate targeted therapy. Next slide. In the last couple of minutes, I would like to talk a little bit about the genetic predisposition to colorectal cancer because it's also a part of the precision medicine. The first analysis consists often on testing the expression of the mismatch repair gene by immunohistochemistry and microsatellite stability status. In a second time, we propose a germline testing if the tumor analysis is evocative using blood or saliva in genetic consultations. This analysis can detect inherited mutations, which can be uh, transmitted to progeny. This inherited mutation can be used for testing the relatives and guide the genetic counseling in the family. Next slide. 
This is an example of a family with Lynch syndrome. We can precise the surveillance of Marianne. Next slide. And propose predictive genetic testing to her relatives in order to adapt surveillance and prevention in the family. Next slide. To conclude, there is still quite few targeted drugs in gastrointestinal cancers as compared to other tumors. We need a better clinical, histological, and molecular characterization of digestive cancers um, in order to obtain new therapeutic targets. Most established biomarkers have a low prevalence, their therapeutic niche, like R2. But it's important to identify the patients who have uh, this type of mutation and who could have the corresponding targeted treatment. The results of immunotherapy in colorectal cancers with microsatellite instability are very promising. And a genetic counseling is important in case of microsatellite instability tumors, in particular, as not to miss a Lynch syndrome. We are awaiting progress in the future, thanks to the next generation sequencing approach with new potential targets and the development of ctDNA analyses to anticipate resistance and disease progression. Thank you for uh, I thank you for your attention. <laughs>